Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning to everyone. Thank you very much for coming here. I'm very glad to present uh, this re research that I've been conducting uh, with uh, David Laniado, who unfortunately couldn't come. And uh, I hope this is not a very hard research uh, presentation, although I'm going to explain you exactly what I did. And uh, I really hope that in the last part, uh, with the results, we can think of ideas on how to implement, on how to uh, bring this awareness into changes in Wikipedia. So the title is Identity-Based Motivation in Wikipedia as a Key Collaboration and Content Spread in Between Language Editions. It's not very catchy, I know, it's, it's difficult. But uh, basically, um, what I really like about Wikipedia is that besides being online, free of cost, editable, popular, the larger reference, multilingual, it's uh, something else than that. It's uh, multicultural because uh, when I read the Wikipedia definition, um, I see a part in which it says that it's multilingual and content is a slightly different between language editions. I think it's more than that. It's uh, culturally contextualized. The process of uh, cultural contextualization, which is uh, what uh, took me, what brought me to research to, to study Wikipedia, uh, I think it's very interesting because in the same way that uh, we build houses in very different ways uh, in, in everywhere of the planet, uh, we build very different Wikipedias. And um, before I, I did start this research, I found there were three different strategies to tackle this problem. Uh, the first one was taking the geolocated articles. And uh, they found that they were self-focused. So there were many links in each Wikipedia going to the geolocated articles uh, which were in the, same, uh, in the same country of the Wikipedia. The second strategy was uh, telling that uh, each Wikipedia treats the content in, in, a, in a very different way putting a, a bias or, or a point of view more uh, f focused in, in the same uh, country or, uh, or countries where the, Wiki where the language of the Wikipedia uh, is spoken. And uh, the third one found that uh, each Wikipedia has a, a diversity of content which is not translated. Well, I thought that these three approaches were uh, very interesting in, in uh, explaining how which Wikipedia is contextualized but uh, I wanted to, to look for uh, another one. And I thought that, um, that uh, even uh, this uh, process of context contextualization, uh, cultural contextualization uh, could bring some systemic bias. That, that is that uh, there are some gaps in content in, in one Wikipedia and uh, maybe an excess of content in another Wikipedia. This could all be also be seen as, as richness of, uh, of content that uh, is very valuable because it explains uh, where we come from and what is important to us. Um, so I thought that uh, it would be interesting to approach Wikipedia uh, from who we are because uh, even if Wikipedia is not uh, a social network and there, there has been a lot of discussion about that, um, user uh, are not encouraged to to disclose their personal opinions or personal traits in in the user pages. Uh, curiously, Wikipedia uh, accomplishes with all the uh, building blocks of uh, social media. That is the uh, presence. You, you can track uh, each editor last edits and see if they are active. Uh, you can build relationships in portals, in uh, in talk pages. You have a reputation as a, as a Wikipedian. You build uh, um, groups to, to work in similar interest, uh, conversations to, to, to work on, uh, on the proper content. Uh, but in the end, uh, the central part in, in a social media is identity. So uh, how could identity not affect Wikipedia? Um, I think that uh, in Wikipedia, identity can be a, part of the, of the, of the behavior. Um, so the identity representation is not uh, in, like in Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn in, uh, in what we say about ourselves, but in the content that we might choose. That was my, my working hypothesis. That was my uh, main idea. And, and so uh, user identity could 
could, uh, in a way, shape the content contributions uh, in a way that it could be also unaware. So I looked for a, a psychology framework and I found that uh, Daphne um, Oyserman uh, could bring some interesting ideas. Uh, identity as a, as a concept is uh, what we relate to. So we, sh we have an identity to a group of people and to some ideas. Uh, so first, uh, when we are uh, motivated uh, in an identity way, um, we have to act congruently with that idea. So when we are aligned to an idea, we are more motivated. And secondly, people may not necessarily be serving a personal goal. Like in Wikipedia, we are serving a, a group goal. And third, we are always very ready to act when, uh, when an action is congruent to, to what we are, to our identity. So Wikipedia could fulfill this, this framework, could fulfill these ideas, and, and be uh, the right place where uh, two identities could coexist. The Wikipedian identity, uh, whose goal is to build an encyclopedia, but also a cultural identity, that is uh, the cultural values that, that we share, that uh, we could uh, contribute with them. So cultural identity, uh, if uh, you're not familiar with the concept, uh, is basically what we share uh, with the language, uh, with the territory, uh, with people. And it's these shared meanings that we share with a group of people that differentiates from other people. So uh, what it means is that uh, these meanings uh, are very valuable to us. And uh, in, in Wikipedia, uh, this could apply that uh, when we find the opportunity to, to contribute uh, in our mind, uh, we are always more ready to contribute with something that we feel comfortable with, we feel aligned, that, that is information that we care about than other information that might feel as uncomfortable. So the hypothesis would be that uh, the more identity congruent, the more motivation, and the more motivation, more engagement, and more article creation. And we would get to find a, a group of articles in, in each Wikipedia which are related to the cultural identities of their users. That is, in a way, a, a, a local encyclopedia in, inside each encyclopedia. So to study this, uh, this idea, the cultural identity-related articles, I, I did put three quest uh, four questions, uh, which was uh, to find the extent of, uh, of this group of articles. So this extent would tell me if uh, my hypothesis was right, if uh, uh, identity is something uh, motivating enough to, for us to contribute with what we care. The second one was uh, understanding what this group of articles uh, were about, the, the topical coverage of this group of articles. And the third one uh, linked to the definition of uh, cultural identity that uh, we define our cultural identity in relation with another identity. So uh, the av availability of content in one language uh, would be uh, um, not very important in other languages. So that would mean that uh, it would not be very shared. And the, four, the fourth one uh, would be on, on interest, on engagement, to see exactly if uh, this content uh, is, is really attracting people's interest on it, or it's uh, something uh, that it's secondary. So what we did was to select 40 language editions uh, to have full validity in our hypothesis. We took the first 30 uh, of, in number of articles, uh, plus uh, those which uh, would put uh, differences to, to the selection, like uh, uh, one from each continent, uh, one uh, with different alphabets, and we started the selection. We use uh, the tool labs that the foundation is providing to researchers, and, uh, and we put a, a, a three-step process. First, there was a selection of articles, a filtering to provide a better selection, and, uh, and finally, uh, we would have the cultural identity-related articles for each uh, Wikipedia. So we used three strategies. The first one was using the geolocated articles, we, we would know for sure that these articles are important to these users because they are in, in their more nearby context and environment. And, uh, and we use the, the ISO code for each language to, to, 
to you, um, detect uh, the coordinates that were falling uh, inside the countries uh, in which the, the editors were editing. As you see, the, the number of uh, geolocated articles is, uh, uh, is high. There, there are many uh, for many languages, so this was a, a useful uh, a strategy which uh, would combine perfectly with uh, using the a special keywords to detect the, those articles which in their title, they, they hold the, either the territory name, the gentilic, or uh, the language name. Uh, this strategy would bring to the basket uh, those articles that, uh, that uh, have the, the gentilic, uh, like for instance, uh, the British writers or, or the Catalan singers, uh, which uh, users could relate as something they have in common, something that, from their identity. And uh, the third strategy was using a, a categ category crawling. That is, uh, as we know, categories are are very specific uh, and uh, they are uh, structured as a tree, although sometimes they, they are a bit messy and they, and they, they, uh, they have uh, nods and they return back to more general categories. So we use a, um, a crawling uh, algorithm which was going from more specific, from more general using the categories with the keywords to more specific. So in the first level, we could see those uh, which include the keywords, and in the final level, uh, those articles which were very specific. Here in the example there, uh, we have, for instance, uh, performing arts in England, and at the, at the third level, there are films directed by, by Charlie Chaplin, which is also part of the, of the English heritage. Although these, uh, these three strategies were good for providing a, a group of, of articles, we found that the, there were some interference. The articles which were not supposed to be in the, in the group of articles because of the, of the third strategy, the, the categorization. And so we proposed uh, using a filter. The filter would be something easy and uh, understandable, uh, taking uh, into account the text. That is, uh, um, for each uh, article to be inside of the group, the 50% of the outlinks needed to point out to the, the ground truth of the articles, the, those which we validated as, as good articles, which were the, the first two strategies, the geolocated and the keywords. Uh, this was good because after using the, the filter several times, we could add only those articles which uh, really accomplish uh, the purpose of uh, being in, in the group, which were really talking about the cultural identities. And uh, later, we, we measured uh, our success, uh, that is, the, the, that the filter could uh, prevent interference, and we find that they were all around 3.3 uh, uh, false positive and 3.4 false negative. So the method uh, was working uh, well enough. And, uh, the first question, the result, uh, which would uh, tell us if our identity-based motivation was really something going on, uh, was uh, validated. So around a, a 25%, a quarter of each Wikipedia is like a, a local encyclopedia inside each Wikipedia. Um, this is uh, something that it's variable, but it's for all languages, from the, the very small ones like Guarani or Macedonian or Icelandic to the very big ones. Curiously enough, the English Wikipedia has a uh, 46% of uh, content related to their English-speaking uh, uh, countries. Uh, that is, the, they provide uh, high schools, they provide all kinds of positions, so the one which is supposed to be the most, uh, let's say, multicultural or, uh, or big encyclopedia uh, was also, uh, is also the one which has more culturally identity-related articles. Um, later, uh, so the, to have an idea, the culturally identity-related articles um, are different from the universal articles. That would be, for instance, the sun as a, a very general article that every Wikipedia must have and because it's something that we all relate to. And uh, for a cultural, cultural identity related articles, CIRA, um, we have uh, the geolocated, would be Times Square. We have uh, English literature, that would be the part of the, having the keywords inside. 
or that would be the Bradbury cake, which is something very specific from a, a region in England that it's very important for a region, but very few people outside of that know about. So the second question would be to understand what was inside this group of articles more in detail. And we found that the most important categories in Wikipedia were also having articles in, in, uh, in Sierra. They were also uh, important to describe Sierra. So we used a, a category algorithm to, to understand what was there, and we found that geography, people, and culture were more important, the most important. Yesterday, when I was having lunch, I talked to an Italian guy, and he was telling, oh, we have a lot of biographies in our Italian uh, Wikipedia, and curiously, uh, this was part also the results, because uh, the Italian one was, was the one with more biographies. Uh, results are, are ex expectable, expectable because uh, Japanese is the one talking more about uh, technology, uh, Hebrew is the one talking more about uh, um, religion, and Icelandic uh, about geography and culture. So we got to a group of articles which could be a rich, uh, uh, a rich data set to understand cultures and to understand Wikipedias. And, uh, but the most interesting part is uh, what do we share between Wikipedias? That is, uh, what we have uh, in common? Uh, what do I know about uh, other languages which are distant from, from mine? And uh, this table is a, a table that if you are interested, I can provide uh, later, because it, it tells uh, exactly what a group of articles uh, from one Wikipedia is shared uh, into another. For instance, in the, in the line, we, we see the English Wikipedia has 12% uh, of, the, of the Catalan Wikipedia, 24% uh, of, uh, of the Czech Wikipedia. That is, the English Wikipedia is very good at, uh, at having Sierra from other Wikipedias, um, but that's because it's very large. The, the other interesting part is that uh, those Wikipedias which were geographically together, very close uh, in the territory, were also um, sharing more articles. Um, but still, uh, these articles, Sierra, are 4.5 uh, 4 times uh, less shared than, than an average article in Wikipedia. That's a lot. That's uh, something that uh, is very unique. They are articles uh, which are uh, talking about uh, themes that are very specific, but some of them which are also very interesting because they, they define what, uh, what we all know about our culture. I, I run a similar algorithm uh, five years ago, and I saw that uh, while uh, the number of interwiki links double in, uh, in most of Wikipedias, for the seer part, which is not exactly the same uh, I was doing now, uh, remain in similar proportions. So um, most uh, articles which were shared were the geography and people, but uh, around 60% uh, uh, of, uh, of CIRA is completely unique. They are articles which are unknown in other Wikipedias. So the results were va validated at the hypothesis. People are motivated to to contribute with uh, what they care about, what, uh, way, what they feel aligned in their, in their culture, but still a 25% uh, for some languages could be considered something secondary, something that uh, as a minor or not as important as universal content. So what we did was to, to study in more detail the number of edits of, uh, of this group of articles. And we saw that, meanwhile, uh, the proportion of articles was the 25% uh, when uh, we were taking into account uh, page views or number of edits, this, uh, this proportion uh, was always higher. There is, uh, for instance, uh, the, the Catalan Wikipedia has a... Yeah, the Catalan Wikipedia has 16% uh, uh, of uh, Sierra, and uh, in number of uh, edits is around the, 40, the 44. That's uh, a big proportion that uh, I think that uh, many editors, uh, not just in the Catalan, but in the other Wikipedias are, are not aware that uh, these articles, in average, they have more edits, they are longer, they are richer. 
So what we, why would we consider this bias something bad if we are making uh, better articles for what we know and what we feel align? Um, there was a story I, I saw a few days ago about uh, a girl that uh, realized that in, in her library at, at her home only had English books. And, uh, and she decided to, to put a, a book from each country of the world in, in her library to really understand the richness of, uh, of what the world provides uh, in terms of, of literature. So we should do the same in Wikipedia. We should start, uh, what I say, bridging the, the cultural gap. Um, the red, uh, the red uh, spaces in, in that table that uh, were showing that the content is, is not very shared is telling us that we have the opportunity to make every Wikipedia richer with content from other Wikipedias. Uh, bridging the cultural gap uh, from the one side would be importing con content from other Wikipedias to our Wikipedias. For instance, uh, in uh, my home Wikipedia, Catalan Wikipedia, we should be able to learn about Kenyan music or, or Bangladesh cuisine. And uh, in the other side, uh, we should also be able to export to identify what uh, we think is most important from our culture that other cultures they have available to understand us when, uh, when they read about uh, the news, uh, what, what's going on in our, in our regions or countries. So what we are working on is uh, uh, in a method uh, for bridging the cultural gap. In this, uh, in this figure, we can see that the number of, uh, of interlanguage links is in the, in the X. And, uh, and in the E is the number of uh, editors uh, with a calculation uh, in, in terms of, um, of editors and not, ed and not multilingual. So we could see which articles are more, more priority to be translated in other, in other languages. So in, in the end, it's finding the, the gems, the, those articles which are very unique and, and we could uh, export. So in the same way that uh, we build uh, very different uh, Wikipedias, and I put the metaphor of a house, now we need to build very different bridges because each Wikipedia um, can import content but also can tailor it to the necessities or, or to the neutral point of view according to that Wikipedia. Because uh, in the end, uh, the goal would be to add to the definition of uh, Wikipedia, all, besides being uh, multilingual and all those unique characteristics that we all love in Wikipedia, uh, to be also the most multicultural uh, reference information source. And uh, that's something that we can work on uh, with list of articles, having a uh, a, a list of uh, cultural identity related articles, like the hundred uh, for each language. I think that this would be uh, a good uh, approach uh, for a start. Just imagine uh, there are 293 languages, if uh, I'm right. Uh, this would be around 30,000 articles uh, for each Wikipedia about the other cultures. Uh, to at least provide the minimal amount of uh, cultural uh, bridge uh, comprehension, but also we can we can work in in more than dynamic approaches to continually exporting and importing, uh, maybe with a, with a service of uh, article recommendation. Um, so um, in the future, now we are working on on detecting th those valuable articles, but we would be very glad to to count on. Uh, on uh, people from uh, each community to identify articles and, and to build a list or, or to at least provide uh, some ideas. So we invite everyone uh, to either uh, bring ideas to improve the data sets, to visualize cultural specificities, compare uh, topics, or uh, disseminate uh, our research. Because I think that uh, we have a, a very uh, valuable goal, which is make each Wikipedia more multicultural, and that's something that uh, we have to do it uh, everyone. So thank you very much. Uh, now we have uh, five minutes for questions. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sorry. You mean the process? Yeah. Oh, the data is provided by data uh, by tool labs. So we have an instant copy of uh, of each uh, Wikipedia database that we can turn into a data set with only those uh, those parameters that we are interested in, and uh, and then uh, there are either uh, programs to uh, to do analysis and visualization. Um, the one I was using uh, in particular is is Tableau, which I recommend very much because it's is very uh, usable uh, for uh, all kind of users, and uh, and it's also uh, it, it also provides a lot of methods and and uh, visualization types. Hello, I'm Natasha. Can, can you maybe uh, make a small digression or conclusion towards the gender gap? Because I, I thought you would be addressing a little bit because <laughs> you attack gender gap. So uh, it's very interesting. And in this room, we, there were people from various projects within the gender gap which have been translating stuff and uh, thinking of the way of communicating good articles to be translated in, uh, in mm -hmm. other languages. Well, I, I think it's a, a very difficult question for me <laughs> because uh, it's not the focus of uh, my study. Uh, I, I'm aware that uh, in the program uh, I was uh, located in the gender gap uh, section, although uh, I, I did send my, my presentation in the abstract with a very clear explanation of, of what uh, it was explaining. Although um, what I, I can contribute to the topic of gender gap is that um, in, in the, from the cultural point of view, uh, there are languages which uh, suffer the digital divide, and, and there are uh, countries in, in which, uh, for women, it's even more difficult to, to uh, ac access, uh, access uh, Wikipedia and internet in general. So I think this would be a very interesting topic of research, for instance, in Africans' Wikipedia that we detected cultural articles and, and see the number of biographies uh, about women uh, to detect uh, how many women uh, edited cultural articles uh, to explore these relationships uh, would provide us an idea on uh, how the gender gap uh, affects uh, more uh, certain cultures than others. Um, my intuition is that, for instance, Nordic, la Nordic languages, uh, the gender gap is, is lower, but now it's just a perception. Uh, I would need to, to go down to the data. Hi. <laughs> so I think it's uh, um, aligned with that question. There are issues that go across Wikipedia. Like, well, one is gender gap, and another one that I was thinking when I was uh, seeing your presentation is uh, harassment. So is there any way that you can see um, either your research or maybe next steps of your research uh, contribute any views or insights into how to deal with that uh, beyond uh, culture, uh, if that makes sense. It's, it's a, I repeat, it's a very difficult question because uh, uh, gender gap, the, the way I understand it, uh, it, exists because of several factors. Yesterday, I, I attended a, a very good presentation in Wikimedia Research, and, um, and some of them uh, were uh, talking about uh, the lack of time uh, to, to uh, at, attend uh, hobbies, the, uh, the internet access, or, or the cultural values. Um, in, this, in this case, I, I, do know, I do not go deep into uh, the details of uh, each culture, uh, uh, how, um, how uh, understands the position of women. Uh, there, there, there is one anthropologist called Hoefstede, uh, who studies the cultures uh, as a group of values. There are four different values. Uh, one of them is dominance, the other one is uh, cooperation. And, and so understanding uh, how these values uh, appear in cultural identity related articles would provide us some uh, uh, information on, uh, on how uh, culture is also a factor of in influencing gender gap.
Thanks. Um, this is probably stating the obvious, um, but it's connected to the gender gap, and it, it just strikes me that the presentation you gave really just reinforced my own understanding of why the gender gap is so significant. Because if, you know, the simplistic perspective is that you write about that which you know, that which you understand, and which is congruent with your own identity. And so if the majority of editors are men, <laughs> then obviously they're writing things that are congruent with that identity. So although your presentation wasn't about the gender gap, I feel that it reinforced for me how, um, how actually the gender gap plays into that con cultural contextualization and how that, that, that is an issue. And whilst the richness that you talked about I think is really important and we shouldn't lose sight of that, I think there is also um, the systemic bias on the gender side which sort of plays out more because of your um, theory being supported by the evidence. Hmm. That makes sense? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? I, I couldn't understand. I'm really sorry, I wasn't really asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> I was sort of making a statement that I think that your Sure. Sorry. Yeah. So I wasn't actually asking a question. I was saying that I feel that the evidence related in the presentation, which is that people write about what they know um, and write about things which are culturally congruent with their identity, simply for me reinforces the significance of the gender gap um, and the, the huge disparity in editor numbers because what we're hearing about um, are male voices, male perspectives, male identity. Hmm. So it's, it's a point rather than a question, so apologies. Well, it makes a lot of sense what, uh, what you're proposing, what uh, your idea is, because uh, identity is something that it's, uh, it's very wide. I mean, uh, everyone has a personal identity and different social identities. So me, as a boyfriend of my girlfriend, as a football player, um, I relate to different groups. And uh, of course, uh, part of my identity is being a man. And uh, certain topics, certain uh, cultural ideas can make me feel very aligned to, to, with my identity. So uh, th this would be a, a good start for new research, uh, identity-based motivation to study gender gap as well. <laughs> Thanks. I, I'm just wondering because you say you made this research out of your male point of view, but um, there's, this, there's this project um, by the United Nations called a He for She. So I think it's also a male issue. I think it's not only a female issue, because um, yeah, half of the population are women in this world, and men deal with women. So I think <laughs> it's also <laughs> the question for men to take care of that. <laughs> I, I'm very sorry to disappoint many people because I'm not talking about gender gap. Um, <laughs> um, I, I think that uh, they are very different problems, but they are both important to address. Uh, we, we have a, a very rich uh, Wikipedias, and uh, the more that we address the different gaps, uh, we are going to make it them better. Um, the process of uh, editing Wikipedia is a very complex process that it's not representative of each society. We, we know that because uh, Wikipedians are, are very tech skill, uh, technological skill. Uh, they are uh, more knowledgeable than, uh, than the average population. And so if uh, we address gender gap, uh, we address the digital divide, we're gonna have uh, more uh, rich Wikipedias in terms of uh, topics and of course of uh, culture. So uh, what I'm proposing is to each Wikipedia to look for what all the Wikipedias they have uh, as culturally valuable content and to import them into their Wikipedia. And the other way around, uh, each Wikipedia to coordinate themselves to export content. And for that, we can count on, uh, on tools like content translation or, or we can make uh, groups uh, in meta, I think that several strategies can be useful. <laughs>